Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models Design of Experiments. And this is actually another little mini-series within that playlist. And this little mini-series deals with one-way random effects ANOVA models. And this is part three. And this, and I'm titled Another Proof for the Distribution of the Sum of Squares Treatment. In part two, we prove the distribution of, of the sum of squares error and the sum of squares treatment. But this is another proof, and I think it you know, adds to your mathematical tool bag. Plus, we'll use some of this in a later video. I mean, a later mini-series. So if we look at y minus the grand mean, um, the grand mean is can be thought of as j times y. Now, j is that perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of ones. Um, but when it's written like this, we can write factor out of y. So this difference, i minus j, y. Okay. So stay with me here. So, but now y, the model we're looking at in the one-way random effects is mu1 times z tau plus epsilon. Now the tau's are normally distributed with mean zero, variance covariance matrix, sigma tau squared i, Epsilon is, is normally distributed with mean zero, and that should be a little vector sign above that. Uh, sigma squared i. The tau's and the epsilons are independent. Now, the expected value of, of i minus j y, this is constant, so it comes out front. Expected value of this, remember, the, all the, that's zero, zero, so we're just left with this. But this is I minus J, so it's a perpendicular projection matrix on the, on the orthogonal complement space, the column space of one, but we live in, in, in A space. But since this is one, it's orthogonal to that, so it, it goes to zero. So the mean of this is zero. Now the variance covariance matrix of why do I say I minus M? That should be a J. So let's fix that. So this is J, right? Because then the variance is <coughs> I minus J out front, and then you take I minus the transpose out back, but it's a symmetric matrix, so we just get this. The variance of Y, in a previous video, we, we called it V, but then V was this. And now when we take this product. So we take this into here and we get this and then we take these into that and we get this. Now if we take M times I we get M and M times J we get J. So that's how we go from here to here. This is item potent so we just get it back when we multiply. Now we do this math here. So IM is M and IJ is J and JM is, is JM and JJ is J. Um, this comes down. Now he, here the, uh, minus JM, this is J. So we have minus J and plus J so those go away so we're left with M minus J. And then this comes down. Now let's call this sigma. So this is the variance, covariance matrix associated with I minus J, Y. Now let's look, oh, so that tells us that Y minus the grand mean, right? Because that's what we're doing. That's a linear combination of the Y's. So it has this mean and this variance. So it has it's multivariate normal, mean zero, variance covariance matrix sigma, right? This. Now, let's let A be this. Now, A is symmetric, right? Because this is symmetric. M is symmetric. So A is symmetric. So now let's look at A times sigma. And we're building up to one of the theorems in the quadratic forms list, a distribution of quadratic forms playlist that I have. Um, let's look at this. This 
actually has to be item potent for the theory to work. So let's multiply this out. So we have m times this, right? This is a times sigma. Now, if we take, um, we leave the constant out front. m times this, so m and m is m, and m minus j is j. So we, we get it back. And then this, we get m, and that's j. So now let's right factor out an m minus j. So we have, and then the constants left over is n sigma tau squared plus sigma. Well, that cancels with this, leaving 1. So we're left with just m minus j. But m minus j is item potent. It's a perpendicular projection matrix. So it is this, this a times sigma is, is item potent. So the rank of A sigma is the rank of M minus J, which is A minus 1. So by theorem 2, ah, this is the theorem. Um, distribution of quadratic forms. We know, now remember, so the mean was 0, and this was the variance covariance matrix. So this times A, so the, you know that vector times this matrix a times this is a central chi squared with a minus one degrees of freedom and this instantly follows from theorem two right it's a central chi squared okay yeah that's a pretty cool proof in itself so now what we wanted to show was the sum of squares treatment divided by sigma squared plus n times sigma tau squared is a central chi squared with a minus one degrees of freedom. And this is, it's unconditionally a central chi squared distribution, which to me is a, it's a little surprising in itself, but here's the proof. So we know the distribution of this, which is, it's central chi squared with a minus one degrees of freedom. This is. Okay, but now let's start unpacking it. This, okay, well this side here, remember when you right factor to Y became this. And then we do the same here, but we have to distribute the transpose. And then A was this matrix. So this constant, we bring out front, and that's what this represents. So we're left with this, I minus J, now, M is a perpendicular projection matrix, so it's item potent. So it times itself is just M. So we can, so we're not changing anything, and that comes back. So now let's multiply this in here. So we get M, and then J times M is J. And then over here, we get M and J. So we get this. Remember, this is symmetric, so we could put a tick here, and it won't change it. But then we can unpack that transpose and get this and then this just comes down but when we multiply m times y we get what's called a treatment mean vector and you're going to have to look in part one of this mini series to see its form and then j times y we get the grand mean mean vector remember it's all transpose in the same way over here now when you do this, when you create this vector, and then this vector, the dot product, it creates a sum. But the way that they're indexed, this creates this little double sum. Remember, this comes down, and it, and it creates this double sum from j to n, and, and i equals 1 to a. But this, well, the sum is exactly what we call the sum of squares treatment in in scalar form. And then it's divided by this. But wait, that's the distribution that we wanted to find out. And it's equal to this. And this is chi squared, a central chi squared with a minus one. So this has to be a central chi squared with a minus one. All right, well that's all I have for this video. Um, and then in, in part four, we're gonna look at variance components estimation and and this is a pretty it's a, it's a baby introduction to variance components estimation and so when i create 
a bigger playlist and we're going to look at mixed models and we're really going to delve into that hard. So the uh, part four is going to be a nice little introduction to that. Well, that's, I hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.